Center of Greater Cleveland. I'm Phyllis Harris, the Executive Director, and I'm very excited this Saturday morning. We have visiting the center today Chad Griffin from HRC. He's going to spend some time with our youth here, listening to their stories, hearing their voice about what it's like to grow up LGBTQ in Cleveland. Thank you so much and enjoy the day. I'm Phyllis Harris. Welcome to the LGBT Community Center here in Cleveland. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I always have to give a shout out to my daughter, Jaden. Hi, Jaden. So what I know is that it is Saturday morning, and we had um, we had confirmed 13 young people here, and I want to point out the, the young people who actually gave us their Saturday morning <laughs> and, and showed up. Harmony here, and I didn't get your name, but and Megan, Megan. Yes. Thank you. So thank you for coming. Thank, thank you. you. Nice. Um, I'm going to pass the mic over to you. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to tell you a little bit about himself. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, Phyllis, and for for opening up your doors here. I, I said when I walked in, what an incredibly welcoming facility. I spend a lot of time traveling the country and going to, to cities big and small. Um, and it's an incredible resource that you have here, and I know you're working to elevate and to expand your services, um, and I hope we can be, be partners with you uh, going forward. There are so many communities across this country that have no support system um, and have no center. Um, including my home state of Arkansas, it does not have an LGBT center. There are, there are some, some uh, smaller support systems that are starting to, to come up, um, but it's an incredible resource that you have here that we should, ideally could not only expand here, but really replicate um, and hopefully get public funding for yes. you, both city, yeah. city and, uh, and state funding. I know some of our centers across the country do that, and, and I hope this survey um, will serve. Um, it's also a real, real honor to have Councilman um, Joe have Simperman. I said that right, didn't I? Joe. Joe. <laughs> to have the Councilman here on a Saturday morning um, and to show your support. Uh, and thank you uh, for your leadership um, here in this community and, and for getting the, the gay games here. Uh, in Cleveland that you get to host. That's in, we're about a year, two years, so two, 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 <laughs> years. <laughs> two years away. Is that 24 months or is it? Um, and also um, the task force, Miguel, thank you uh, for being here. And Dare to Care, Liz, it's nice to see you again uh, after Columbus and Gary. It's nice to meet you and I've, as I said, been a big fan of Colson's for a long time and look forward to being able to do more and partner uh, with you all. So, um, and particularly to, uh, to Harmony and Megan, um, thank you all for showing up. I know it's not the first thing you do on a Saturday morning. Get up and say, I want to go to the center. Um, see there? That's, and that is credit um, to you guys. Um, but I, I really do appreciate it. You know, it's, I grew up in a small town uh, in Arkansas, a town much smaller than Cleveland, with about 9,000 people. Um, and I never knew that I knew another game. Not even one. Um, there were no openly LGBT people uh, in my community. I was uh, deeply closeted even to myself um, and know what it's like uh, to feel isolated um, and to not have a place uh, to turn. Um, and it's that experience and those people um, like that across the country, whether you're in you know, Cleveland or Akron or a tiny town in you know, Arkansas or everything in between, um, a young LGBT person um, is often isolated, is often <coughs> bullied, um, both at, at church or at school, in their own communities. Um, um, and, and certainly what this survey shows is that's true here uh, in the state of Ohio. One of the first things that I did going into this job was to launch a survey of 10,000 LGBT youth across the country. 10,000. The single largest uh, youth survey. Um, and the goal there was to get a real snapshot of your experiences um, so that we could tell that story uh, across the country and take those stories into our city halls and into our state capitals and into the congressional offices uh, in Washington so that we're not just, uh, it's not me conveying um, what I think is true, but us having real evidence to show what life is like uh, for a young 
person growing up today. And the results were sobering. Um, and there are a number of things that I, I'm going to highlight a few things, and then I hope we can just have a discussion and, um, and, and talk about your, your own experiences, and I'd love to hear more about uh, the services here at the center. Um, but it showed that the isolation uh, is incredible. 84% um, um, nationally, of, we also did, by the way, a sample size, um, a sample survey of your straight years so that we could have a comparison. 84% um, of straight youth say that they fit into their communities, 84%. That's as close to as 100 as you get in most any survey, um, 84%. Um, that number drops to about 50%. Only half of the LGBT youth say that they fit into their communities. Um, and the number here uh, in Ohio is right at about that, about 51 or 52 percent. So one out of every two youth feel that they don't fit in at one of the most important times in their lives. The time that we're growing and learning. Um, it should be the time where we, we feel secure and we have the normal uh, worries and concerns that anyone else might have. Um, when straight youth were asked what their top three concerns were, um, graduating from high school, getting into college, and their finances. Um, when we ask LGBT youth their top concerns, bullying at school, not accepting families, and fear of coming out were the top three. Now, of course, you have to worry about our graduate from high school, getting into college, finances, um, but those end up getting pushed down to second tier uh, issues um, for our LGBT uh, youth across this country. Um, and that's something that we must change. It's something that we have to change. Um, and it's something that we know how it can be changed. It's no surprise, these figures, because it also looks at 90% um, of LGBT youth say that they repeatedly hear negative messages in their community. That number is also true here. It's 93% in the state of Ohio. 64% um, of those say that they hear those negative messages from their elected leaders. The word there key is leaders. Our elected officials are supposed to be our mentors, the people we all look up to, uh, those that many aspire to be someday. Um, instead, our LGBT young people are hearing the negative messages uh, from our elected leaders. You know, thank God we have someone like Joe, and an increasing number, by the way, um, of leaders across this country elected um, who are standing up and speaking up for equality and for dignity. Um, but not yet enough, and we can't stop until that changes, because as this survey shows, the impact is incredible. On the positive side, our youth are incredibly optimistic and resilient. Um, they talk about the internet as being a place where they feel safe and they feel comfortable being who they are, uh, even when they might not be out to their own families or in their own communities or, or even to their, their teachers or some of the cases peers, they feel comfortable being who they are um, online. Um, but when you ask them about being happy in the future um, and being in a place uh, where they can be happy and, and productive citizens, over 60% of those youth say that they need to move to another city or even state to be able to feel comfortable um, and accepted in their community. Um, and the great news about everything I just said, even though it is a lot of sobering things, these are all things we can do something about. They're all things we can do something about. Um, and the work at, at HRC that we do day in and day out um, at the foundation, um, with, whether it's with our uh, faith and religion program, where we're working to elevate more fair-minded uh, religious leaders um, and elevate their voices. Um, in some cases, those who um, voice the negative and the hate uh, tend to get more attention uh, than those that actually believe in the golden rule. Um, and our goal there is to elevate more of those, and we've seen a lot of that over this last year. Um, and our, our Welcoming Schools program, we have a workplace program that is designed to ensure that LGBT people at school, uh, sorry, at work, at their places of employment, are treated equally in places where, uh, for instance, in this state, where we have no state law uh, that protects um, LGBT employees. You're lucky in the city, uh, you have a non-discrimination, an inclusive non-discrimination ordinance um, where we have protections in the city, uh, but statewide they're not. Um, and that's something that we change and that HRC is committed to working with you and the statewide leaders here uh, doing just that. Um, it's also why we need to do more to elevate um, centers like this um, around the country. And it's why I spend a lot of time visiting uh, centers just like this. So 
I want to thank you again for your leadership and for your dedication and commitment. And I hope that this research, particularly as we have such significant data specific to Ohio, um, we can use that uh, to change people's minds and get more uh, investment uh, in the center here uh, to support folks um, like Harmony and Megan who, and all of their peers who, uh, yeah, who slept in. Maybe they need more. Thank you.